surprise how we doing hello and welcome to the round six fan cams after the blues put in one of the more gutsy performances that we've seen in recent times 17 goals 15 117 to 15 goals 8 98 against the giants who were undefeated going into this game it didn't matter mate it didn't matter it did not matter tougher for longer that was absolutely incredible one of the more enjoyable wins to be at and this is just going to be oh so good so special uh the voice will wither away as the fan cams go because i've been screaming my absolute head off but i don't care we're gonna have a lot of fun tonight uh would love to hear from you if you would like to call in and share your thoughts on the game the link is going in the chat right now so if you would like to come in if you've never been in before come in make a call putting a link in right now hit it come in and we'll have a chat these fan cams are brought to you by mr koken proud sponsor of the fan cams and uh that's special. That's so good. Let's start this. Let's pour some whiskey and start this show. Up. Let's go, Pommy. Yeah. Hey, mate. Hey, get, get, the, get the bags of antihistamine out. You know what I mean? <laughs> the boys. Hey, I mean, tell you what, we, we asked for character. Yeah. We asked for identity. And I tell you what, they showed you who they were, didn't they? They yeah. showed you who they were that second half. 260 pressure rate in Terry. And we talk about this on ratings all the time. Yeah. That defines us as a club. Once we bring that insane, insane. And you know what? We've been been beaten. Social media, pillar to post in the press. Everyone's been telling me how good. <laughs> hey! how, good how good GWS are. Do you know what I mean? How good GWS are. But you know what? What about them blues, man? Do you know what I mean? They were they were on they, they were backs to the wall, and you know what? Incredible character, man! Incredible four points, and tell you what, we've got the tough weeks, tough weeks. But tell you what, when you play like that and you have that heart, it's going to take a lot to beat you. And tell you, tell you what, every player that's been shot performed, didn't they? I mean, what about Ollie Hollands? Hey, eh? oh my God, little Oliver. Well, Oliver, Oliver. <laughs> I, I, um, yeah, so proud. That's, that's, that's why we watch the game for, for, for moments like that and for games like that. And yeah, I mean, we, we had to bat away the mainstream media. I thought we had to even bat away our own fans. Um, people were obviously pissed off from last week and fair enough and all talk about strength and conditioning. I want to talk about strength and conditioning. Look at look at the way that we fired out that game in the second half, knowing that Williams was down, weedering on one leg, uh, just just harder for longer. And also, I'm not going any further with these fan cams without talking about Mark Pittenet and his work in at stoppage. We were dominant at around the ball, mate. I'll tell you what, playing like a man with a point to prove, didn't he? And it, it was interesting. We saw that really aggressive return to stoppage game. You see Pitt and Ed, Hewitt and Cripps being like a wall. They were just, they were like a, they're, they're like a Dyson vacuum cleaner, aren't they? They just sweep at the front, take everything out. Pitt and Ed doing what Pitt and Ed did. And I mean, you know what? You know what does turn me on? We, we might actually see some colour on his, uh, <laughs> his chart today, you know, with a cheeky little mark in the midfield as well. Um, playing with a point to prove, and it just shows, doesn't it, that Voss has got this mantra. He's got he's got this idea. Two rooks, and you know, you know what they 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 found they found a beautiful way, didn't they? They found a way. They looked good, and like you say, the injuries. And we said at half time, right? It was one of them games where I kept saying I said at half time. People talk about our structure, but our structure keeps us in it because. Let's be honest, yeah. GWS were probably playing by miles the better football. They were ruthless. But I was we said at half time, Yaval, when we were chatting, I was chatting with Yaval individually, and I said, Someone needs to grab this game by the cock. Yeah. Someone needs to, in that midfield, say, I'm grabbing it. 
right? And Patrick Cripps didn't grab it by the cock. He grabbed it by the pancreas. Do you know what I mean? That's how, I mean, that's how right deep he got his hand up there. He was like, <laughs> take that, you badger. Right? And you know what? Cripps and Walsh, man. Like, you, you know what? Say all your injuries you want. I, I, I don't care who gets injured. As long as I see Walsh, Cripps, Colonel Mackay, fuck me. You, you, I mean, you could probably play you and me, Terry, when they're playing like that, and you wouldn't yeah. notice a difference. Like, that is incredible from Cripps. And we talk about Captain Cripps. That is the Captain Cripps. That's Cripps, isn't it? I mean, Jesus. Like, I just wanted to lick the sweat off his brow halfway through the fourth. Yeah, he was... He was immense. There was a period, probably, obviously, the second quarter, it gets away from us. To be honest, I didn't think we were playing badly. I just thought the Giants were so clinical. Any turnover we we seemed to make, they were punishing it super quick. Anytime we didn't lock the ball in our forward 50, um, after the ball came to ground and the exit happened, they were just seemingly able to just get it where they wanted to get it. And they were efficient and they were clean and they played like, the best side in the competition that, that they were on the top side on the ladder. And then our ability in that second to wrestle it back, find some momentum into halftime and then blow it away in the third quarter. I I mean, I was with my sister. It was just the two of us today. I rarely have had that much fun in a quarter. I think it might've been a 13 minute period of time. That was, that was everything, mate. For me, for, for, for me, when you look at great sides, you look at great sides in any sport. There's there's something about a side. I think there's I think there's the two fundamentals that separate great sides from okay sides. One is how they respond, right, to animosity and things like that. And I think I think you can never say even when Cowton was shit, they've always had that in them. Do you know what I mean? That like you can bag them and bag them and bag them, they'll pull one out. But I think the other one as well is the ability to, to grind. And I think you look at a lot of teams, and one of my question marks about GWS, and I know I am the biggest anti-GWS man. If you watch my content, I don't rate them. They, they are sexy, but it's quite hard when you're sexy to get your hands dirty. Do you know what I mean? You, you look at the Instagram male models. They ain't fucking getting under their toilet and fixing a pipe, are they? They're hiring someone in. But these blue boys, you know, they build their own sheds. They build their own kitchens. You know what I mean? And they're also good-looking roosters. These boys have got a little bit of character, man. And I think that's something that defines us. And as I said it at half time. sometimes I feel like we try and be something we're not. Sometimes I think people get way too crowded. And you can look at stats. You can look at analytics. Some things that you can't measure, and that's character. And these boys have character in abundance. And that that sec, third, fourth quarter, tell you what, keep your short, sharp kicks, stick them up your ass. Play the fucking handball game, stick that up your ass as well. Kick marks, stick that up your ass. I just want to see 18 guys looking to kill someone with a football and then looking to run with each other when they've got it. That manic football, that chaos ball, yep. not many teams can compete with it. And... You know what? Strength and condition. I, I copped a lot on Twitter because evidently, do you know what I mean? A young 19-year-old boy not knowing his body and overdoing it in training. Strength and conditioning. Part of strength and conditioning as well is seeing out games. And I've, I've just seen a side that the press have told me are the greatest side in the league. Give them the flag now. Be ran rampant to the death by our boys. By our boys. So... Let, let's let, let's kick ass. Tell you what, I said it last year. I'll say it again. Can't fight fate. Who the fuck is next? Go on. <laughs> who, who do you want next? Take two more players off us. We'll give them a week. Right? We'll give them a week off. Take two more. Because tell you what, we're ready. We're ready. Tell you what, that game there, any questions you've got about these boys, that, that was answered. These yeah. boys are character. Going into the game... I mean, the, the injuries suck. It, you know, it is what it is. But going into the game, part of the story for me was, you know, it's the test. It's the first real test of the season because of the injuries and who was missing. However, on the flip side, the attention, I thought, was just far too too heavily 
one-sided onto who wasn't there. We need to find out about whether we've got a list to win a flag. So that, like, I don't want injuries, but that kind of means you need to see what Cowan's like when he comes in. Can he play at the level? You need to see what some of these other guys are like when they come in and play at the level. Lewis Young, et cetera. And so you've got to prove, I feel like, that you've got 28 to 30 on the list, maybe more that can play. And I think the sooner that we get into a squad mentality, the better this experience is going to be. Because that third quarter, when the crowd finally started getting into it as a collective, poof, that is the competitive advantage that that we hear about right there. Mate, mate, our depth is so deep now. If you're a millionaire with a load of submarines controlled by an Xbox controller, you're shitting yourself it's that deep. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's implosion central, bro. But no, you spawn, Terry. And you know what? Like the players that come in, how many times do we want to say it? They put in a shift. Cowan working his little tush off down Mate, the back. Out giving it a Toby Gray, giving him a little bit of that, you know? Yeah, do you know what I mean? Oh. Do you know what I mean? Everyone was saying, oh, shit, we've got, we've got Mr. Sards out. How are we going to stop Toby Green? Jordan Boyd went on a defensive role. And he absolutely towelled him up. Do you know what I mean? Like, T Toby Green's missing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's going to be a race who you find first, Madeline McCann or Toby Green at this stage. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, like and that that's it. These boys put in them shifts. They put in them shifts. They put themselves in the position. And, you know, I remember doing these fan cams with you five years, and I used to rant, where's the passion? Where's, where's the commitment? Shit, they're bad. Like, yeah, the skills are scrappy. Yeah, sometimes it looks like we couldn't hit a cow's ass with a banjo. But I'll tell you one thing they have in abundance. Abundance is that desire. And that was for you guys. That was for you guys. I could see it in the third. Them boys, they were putting out. And how good was it to say Crips take that defensive mark and bellow at the troops saying, get fucking out of here. Yeah, get yeah, out yeah, of here. yeah. Mate, mate, fuck me. Come on. Can't fight fate. Flag's ours. Fuck it. Let's go early. Choo-choo, <laughs> motherfuckers. Wait till we get an actual team back. I know. Well, Gav Whelan says he's going to give himself an uppercut for riding off Jacob Weedering in the watch-along. He still owes $20. So, <laughs> good nah, on you, you're Gav. All right. Hey, Gav, mate, we, we all have our moments. You're one of the good ones. Mate, I'm telling you now, like, I'm so proud of the boys. So yeah. proud. Like, you know what? That that's the one thing I find hard with AFL is I don't think you have the connection like like you do EPO. Mm. That is connection. What I saw there that that makes me want to just go out and headbutt a moving truck. Yeah. That is exciting, bro. These boys, man, can't wait. You long next. Oh, I'm, who I'm wants it, out, mate? Who wants it? Who's next? Come on. Mate. Mate, they all can have it, one after another. Like, can't believe we've got to wait days. I just want to play tomorrow. But, mate, honestly, VFL is going to be really interesting tomorrow. But big shout-out, though, before I go, Elijah. Yeah. He's, honestly, he, like, honestly, I, I I might have put all my eggs in the Pom Carter basket. Lidge, Lidge, Lidge is somewhere else, isn't he? I'll have him. I'll have him. Mate, he, he's, the, he, he's the prophet. It's Passover. The seas are about to part. He's here. <laughs> mate, mate. Oh, just there's something about little Lidge, isn't there? Like, yeah. he, he, he just, he looks not like a Carlton player. I think that's what I like about him. Do you know what I mean? He, he, he looks like the kind of person that when he comes out of the shower, he still looks like he needs to go back and scrub. And I like that type of person. Yeah, you know I mean, that, that's what I'm on about. Like, he looks like every tradies apprentice I've ever had in my house. And he yep. plays like it too, mate. Honestly, so proud of them. You know what? Let's let let's kick some ass, eh? Do you know what I mean? Let's Amen to that. Give them another week off. Give the boys another week off. Let's just keep fucking doing it. Poured myself a whiskey, um, mate. Thanks for the watch along. Cheers to you and go Blues, mate. Go Blues, Quad! <laughs> Sandy, thank you very much for the $15 and the super sticker. I appreciate that. All right. Let's have a look. Tyler, get in here, mate. Get oh, right in here. What a good win that was, mate. That's gutsy. Yeah. Gutsy as all hell. 
<laughs> yeah, we're back. The Blues are back. No, we're giant slayers. We're giant slayers now. Oh, what a game. That uh, I'll tell you what, that turnaround from that second quarter, that just shows the belief in this team. That's what we that that is what we need to do every time now. It's just mm. play with a bit of heart and a bit of ticker. It was so amazing. So amazing. Do you know I I, I, I never thought we were we were not gonna win. I just I thought it was gonna be very difficult, but I thought we were gonna win this one easily. Do you know there was something about that second quarter that I mean we've watched them for so long now. Um yeah. even if you just isolate the last five to six years, how many times do we get uh, a run of goals against us in the past and we sort of just wait until the siren goes for the half or the quarter and then we regroup? Their ability to regroup, just figure it out. I mean, the Giants were just borderline playing perfect footy, couldn't miss. Oh, they were. And I think it was an acres tackle on the wing when it, the flow was going against us. And then the crowd started lifting yes. and then oh. kicked a goal. I yeah. think that is one of the more critical moments, p- passages of play um, that we've seen from this group, period, oh, to be able to one, do it mid-quarter. 100%. And see, um, I, I find uh, as well, like you got players like Walsh. Oh, my God, mate. The, his, his level-headedness has yeah. been... Amazing for this team, and especially that 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 kick that he kicked on an angle and cut it perfectly into the into the fifty for that goal. Oh, mate, it was beautiful. But I just think that the one player I was most impressed with was Tom DeConning. Oh my God, Terry! I said I, I said if he figures out his rucking ability and he stays on the deck. He'll absolutely fly. And, oh, did he fly. Yeah. Well, I think – I believe that's a career high for his goals. And, I mean, when you've got Pido doing his work in the centre – He had a great – He did. He did. I I think in order for it to work with Pido, we we need Tom to be able to impact forward of centre. And we got that tonight, clearly. Exactly. 100%. And see, that – I take this away a lot because – uh, there was an interview this week, and they were saying about um, when you look at the la- when you look at the start of the season, the majority of Carlton's wins it was all based on turnover, and that was because of just De- Deconning and all of that, right? However, when majority of our wins last year, with like we get Pido firing in the center, and all of that were won based on clearances and stoppages. Now, in this game, we we did uh, when Pido was winning the clearances. We were, and when finally De Conning started really playing well, that's when we were the balance happened. I found e- equal balance, the balance of turnover and clearances. We were on top. That was mm-hmm. when we started to get on top. It's when it is that's that's the synergy that if you want Pito in the side, Tom's got to play like that all the time. Yeah, yep. has to. Yeah, has no, to. no doubt. I think. I mean, I'm looking at it now, and look, you know, clearances is not everything because you also need no. to use the ball well after you win the clearance. But the one that stood out to me, that the the stat that stood out to me, center clearances. So obviously, after a goal, essentially, twenty two to eight, a complete battering, a complete yep. battering, a domination. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. And the likes of um, uh, oh Kennedy having a having a ripper of a game as well. Um, Cripps just absolutely destroyed that midfield. That was, him. and I and to Pom's point, the fact that when he was yelling at the boys, get out here, get get get. That was leadership. That was saying to them, right? If we, you can you can actually we can actually win this game if we put our heads down and we actually want to work for it. And I'll tell you what, 30, 39 disposals, and he was one of the leaders of the clearances. Oh, my God, that's Brownlow votes right there and there. Yeah. Unbelievable. But that synergy between Walsh and Cripps was perfect. Um, and then you had the likes of Boyd as well. Some of he, I, But I will say this, Cottrell, bloody Cottrell, again, he... He says, oh, no, people don't come to watch me. 
bullshit they don't. Seriously, he he's is got starting. strength in the contest now. He's got he's like a contested I player. I know, and that and and his and his tackle pressure, his his ability to impact the play is amazing. And see, like that first half, majority uh, like he he was winning majority of the contest, and it was the same with like Acres as well. Oh God, Acres, God, we've needed a good winger as well. <laughs> Like seriously, Terry. Like <laughs> I'm just in disbelief. Yeah. That was a hell of a game. But I think, as Pom said as well, we we it's not pretty footy, and I don't want pretty footy. I just want us to be going at the ball hard, yeah. having having a crack, taking it to every every team. I that's all we want. That's all we want. And then yes, last week was shit. But you know what? This week is what matters. We scout the top of the ladder. We, we took out the team that was on the top of the ladder. And everyone was absolutely saying, yes, they are the next th- next best thing. And we absolutely demolished them. We had one, one bad quarter, essentially, which was the second quarter. Mm. And yet we came out and absolutely blitzed them. At, that yeah. third quarter was a premiership quarter right there and there. 100%. But Wow, I just want to get you. I just want to get your thoughts on. I could, I could sense Charlie was building that second quarter. He was missing. He was just missing. He was just missing. He was just missing. What was your take on when he just absolutely blew that second half apart? Well, when he kicked the, you know, the thing with Charlie, I've learned he's just got to kick his first. Yeah. When he kicks one, the next one's not far away. He's yep. just got that about him, and. I think between he and Harry, they had six shots on goal in the first half, no goals. Yeah, I thought we were going okay, relatively, and it was just the, really the two of them that I looked at and I said, ah, if you two can just get going, we're okay. And Charlie also brings the magic. When he gets up and about, it kind of just, it's infectious to the team. So, yeah, I mean, Steph was next to me, sort of like <laughs> marking it down. It went, Charlie, Harry, Charlie, Harry, Charlie. Goal, 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 goal. And... Oh, Whew. that's what you want. That's what you want. That's what you want this forward line to do. And that's that was the amazing bit. And just mm. very finally, last point, mm-hmm. friggin' George Hewitt. Oh, yeah. another great game from him. Yeah. Another great game from him. And hopefully also Williams is fine. It was a little knock to his Achilles. Same Achilles that uh, he's had trouble with in the past. So let's hope for that. That's sake, we don't have another injury to that. But bring on the bring on the cats. Seriously. The MCG, cats, pack it out. Let's go. Let's beat the cats. Come on, Carlton. Come go on. Blues. Go See the you, blues. Mate. See you, Terry. <laughs> Wayne, he's become a member again. He's also gifted you guys five memberships. So if you did receive a blue broad membership in the chat and your name went green, that's from Wayne. And then Maz has gifted 10 Blue Abroad memberships. So uh, please be sure to thank them in the chat. All right, let's go. I've got young Harry and Sophie here. Cooper was amazing and Walsh isn't human. I have to say, oh, I've got my Blue Abroad pin here. Oh, what a legend. Yeah. Like, what a second half. The reason we dominated, we opened the ground up and, and like, and our defenders didn't zone. They were a bit more accountable, weren't they? Yeah, they. Yeah. I was starting How good all was the chat. Oh, yeah, what? How, were you going crazy? <laughs> I was going mental. I think my voice will not be with me by the time I wake up tomorrow morning. No. Uh, I was next to my sister, and we were going. Oh. We were having the time of our lives, guys. It was amazing. Yeah, it was so good. But I've got two words: Sam Walsh. Oh. He's incredible. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Could he win the brown low even though he missed the first start of the um start of the round? I I think anything's possible, Harry. Yeah. I think anything's possible. Now some baggers. What else did you take away from today? Did you did you keep uh, the belief even uh, though when things were going yeah. against us? Yeah, so I was getting the crowd involved. Like 
Oh, my dad's little video is me like starting chants with my friends. He was at the front going, Carlton. Stop standing on yeah. a chair and stuff. Yeah. And I like pumped the crowds up. But, like, like, and when Charlie took his time, you know, Charlie didn't take his time. But like when our set players took their time when we had set shots, that what we finally scored. Like, yeah, it's just it's just good to watch them yeah. dig deep. Um, playing against a really good team. I don't think anyone can doubt now what kind of a win that was because we were up against it. Uh, um, a lot of soldiers down. Sophie, what else did you take away from the game? Cooper was amazing. Mm. Like, he was so, like, second half, he was incredible. Like, 24 contested possessions. He was so good. Like, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Terry, guys. I have, yeah, go. Imagine if we play like this for the rest of the season. Oh. Premiership. <laughs> Mate, well, let's give him a little special shout out to this guy here. Jacob yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit sore, wasn't he? Yeah. I love Weedon. Best defender in the comp. Love it. I love it. What's on for the rest of the night, guys? What's the plan? So you gonna watch the replay? So we're just at Nando's now, but then like we're probably gonna watch a replay like yeah. a million times. Gonna watch the replay. And I'm on the holiday, so it's gonna be all like cults and highlights and like stuff. Oh, it's so good, so good. Well, you guys have a great meal. Give Dad a big hug for me, and Hello. go Blues. I'm the oh, yes. Dad the baggers. <laughs> that is literally what it's all about. Cal, hello, mate. All the way from hello, Vegas hello. this time around? Yes, we're back in Vegas. Back in back Vegas? 4-0 and when I'm in Vegas, so oh, it looks like I'll be staying here for a while. Yeah, you're not um, coming back. No, no, I won't be coming back. Um, I do want to ask you one thing. Yeah? You did see the old man on the train. I saw your dad on the train on the way home. I did. We yeah, took a photo. Tell me that. He did tell me. <laughs> yeah. What are the chances of that? Mate, it, I was I was just looking at my phone. He came up to me and he's like, "Oh, I'm Cal's dad," and I'm like, "Vegas, Cal? <laughs> that was last week." Um, yeah, magic, mate, magic. That's the that that's the Carlton community for you, right there. Exactly right, tight as can be. Um, I'm basically going to reiterate what everyone's been saying. Um, Crips, Walsh, Pitto, TDK, Harry, Charlie. I mean, if if there wasn't I don't know if we're going to get anyone back next week. Maybe, maybe Chez, maybe Gov, but no one warrants to be dropped next week at all. Like that was, that was 23 unbelievable players. Obviously Zach went down. So maybe he's one change that we need to make, but that was, that was a complete team performance. You were talking about the 22 to eight in the middle, like I guess the Crows, we got smashed, smashed in the middle. They've clearly gone to work and just, put them to the sword. Like they, they smashed them in the middle. I thought Cowan had a really, really good game. Uh, yep. I thought he just, he hit it hard and, and Boydy as well. He, you know, he got smashed by, uh, by Toby and they just rallied, they rallied behind him. And I'm glad you brought them up. Both of them. Boyd, because of, I mean, he was just good all day. Had to go on to Toby Green in the second half. Um, Cowan, I thought his ground ball work was exquisite. But the, the moment where Boyd goes back with the fly of the ball, cops it hit from Toby Green and Cowan flying the flag, just young fella, not afraid of uh, the moment, flying the flag. I just think that's a really important moment in the story of Lockie Cowan, you know? It reminds me a little bit of when Stocker came to the club. Like He, he just yeah. plays for the jumper. He's just tough. Yeah. He might not get a game every week, but when he does, he will give you one hundred and ten percent. Like he he will die for the for the for the logo. I was going to talk about um, little passages in the fourth. Acres, Cottrell, and Durden. There was a few sort of moments on the wing where it was a 50-50 ball, and you just see those three just charging through the pack, and they win it. The land ball probably got it to Crips at one point, and we go inside fifty and. I mean, how he looked like he was going to take every single one of those pack marks. He, yeah. he got a fair few of them, um, but like that, that's, that is an awesome, awesome win. Yeah. I th probably got, I was getting a little frustrated in that first half just because it felt like every time the ball dropped 
the ball came to ground in our forward 50, we just didn't have enough presence at the drop of the ball. And it just felt like, and I'm probably exaggerating, I'll watch the replay, but it felt like every time the Giants had an exit, they were able to go the other way and, and literally kick a goal every time. And again, I'm going to have to watch the replay, but I don't know how they went from looking so lethal to us just completely turning the game on its head. I, I still don't really understand. Yeah, I think I think they were saying during the, the broadcast, I think their first nine goals were all from turnover. And that's exactly what wow. you were saying. They were, they were wow. starting from their from their back half. They'd get the drop of the feet, a like quick handball chain, and they're just over the back. And that's how they got most of their goals. I think Pom alluded to we had in the in yeah, sort of when we were having that run in the third quarter, our pressure rating was up at two sixty. In the first half it was at one fifty. So like that goes to show how much whatever changed in that sort of back half of the third term, it just clicked and we kicked, I think, yeah, seven or eight straight. And yeah, they had no answers. I don't know what they did just to, to stop, but Vossi outcoached Kingsley pretty comfortably. That's such a good win. Oh, man. We can't win. Wait to what was it like that. at the ground? Because I'm missing being at the footy. Oh, yeah. So this is from my perspective. I was sitting level two on the wing. From my perspective, there was a sense of – I didn't feel the crowd truly got into it as a collective until the third quarter when the blitz yeah. happened. And maybe that's something that we can all work on. But first half, you know, we're kicking goals. We're getting up and about. The Giants blitz us a little bit in that second quarter. We start to turn turn it around. And, you know, you have the cheer squad starting the Carlton chant. But that didn't start really growing legs until the third quarter. And then when it started growing legs in the third quarter, lo and behold, the energy in the whole stadium lifted and it was something else. And I don't know, there's, there's a, there's a, there's something about, I know that we can collectively fix that in the first half and bring that for four quarters. I don't know how we do it. I don't know what it is, but we've got to figure that out because that third quarter, when it all clicked, and the boys are playing well. They're lifting. The crowd gets into it, and then everyone's getting into it. it. It's it's the best place on earth to be. It's a Carlton game. It's it's magic. You can't stop us, and we're going we're going nuts. We go nuts. It's just yeah. I tell, I I am so so keen to get back to a game. I, I think the first game we're back at is the Gold Coast game. Okay. So it's it's still a few weeks away, but I've already I've already penciled it in going to be there and although it's probably not a, a big game to be at the first one back but i just, just want to get back to it it's we're on a serious run and yeah mate it's going to be a where were you when the blues turned it around mate so well know. yes yeah yeah exactly right on the yeah. other side of the world would not have thought yeah. i'd be saying that nah good stuff well what time is it right now in vegas uh 3 36 in the morning so good stuff. <laughs> We're good. We're good. I appreciate Do it again you, next mate. week. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see you then. See you, mate. Take see care. you, mate. Damien has gifted 10 Blue Abroad. Well, you guys are generous tonight, gifting memberships to people in the chat. Thanks very much, Damien. Uh, I see Paul Sebastiani here. Let's get him in. He's got the studio. Mr. Paul Sebastiani. Yes! Yes! Somebody fucking give him some credit. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Worldwide. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Four year deal. Should have been 14. <laughs> hey, I'm so happy you've done that. Honestly, I'm 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 stoked. I know TDK kicked three and the, the, the talk will be about him. Pito was a man on a mission today. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> 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 it's so good. It's so good. Okay, how good was he? <laughs> Mate, he was. He's staying here he with was... me the whole time. <laughs> good on you, mate. Well done, son. Well done. Very well yeah. done. No. It <laughs> he was, was sensational. phenomenal today. He was absolutely magnificent. And uh, I find it funny again. The data analysts get it wrong again. Mark Pitternet. We don't score from turnover and we don't win when he's in the team. We don't win scores from turnover. What did we win today? Scores from turnover. (laughs) Oh, dearie me. What do we say? There's levels to this kind of stuff. So anyway, 
it is what it is. Very, 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 very impressive. Very impressive. Um, you couldn't help but have a smile on your face in that third quarter, hey? Mate, that's something was unlocked there. We've not seen mm. that very often. Yeah, yeah. I think it was. You could see that Adel- uh, Adelaide as a Freudian slip. You could see GWS in the first half were getting all those short options, and that's how they were pummeling their way through us. A lot of uncontested possessions, a lot of breaking through our line with short passing, similar to what Adelaide did last week. But I felt they were doing it to more effect. But again, we just kept hanging in there and hanging in there and hanging in there. And What we didn't do last week was stop Adelaide short options. But after half time, I thought in that third term, we really mitigated the way they moved the ball short and by hand and by that short sort of 20 to 25 metre kick. We cut all that off. And then we started we started hitting scores from turnover and we started really making count of that. We smashed them in the middle, out of the middle, the clearances. My Mate, goodness. Have you seen the numbers? <sighs> yeah, it was, I think we nearly doubled their clearance, right? It was 40. 48 to, to 32. And then yeah, the center clearances was 22 to eight. Yeah, yeah. And you, you see the room that Pitonet makes for our midfielders to be able to move through the stoppage as well. And now all of it, now all of a sudden we look fast. I mean, we, we yeah. always have been, I say we're quick. We're quick because we move the ball quickly. I, I wouldn't say foot speed where we're lightning fast, but as we say, you know, the ball moves faster than than your feet. So very, very impressive defensive display, I thought, after half time, and a very impressive offensive display too. I thought the Smalls got involved after half time. was really impressed with a lot of our – I don't want to say lesser lights because they're not lesser lights, but was very, very impressed with the role that Cowan produced today. And you could see it in the reserves last week. He was really strong in the reserves last week, and he really put in a good shift today. I uh, thought Jordan Boyd was phenomenal going back with the blight against Green when he got cleaned up. He put himself in the hole, and that's what you get from him, isn't it? What you see is what you get when it comes to that kind of stuff with Boydie. Very, very Absolutely. brave. And considering that, you know, we had a lot, a lot, a lot of injuries, and that that's what was built up as the week went on. But, you know, resilience and squad depth and and being in it together is something that this group has put at the forefront of, of playing football and it's it's very special to watch. I, I think that this is the beginning of you know last year that halfway point I think was the beginning of something special and we only realise that now but you know that that was such such an impressive win today and to come clear from them as well and do it it was our, it was our most comfortable win for the season mate. Mate <laughs> I, I still yeah. I'm gonna have to watch it again. I, yeah, I, I don't know. No, I do know how we did it because they st- we started getting on a roll and lifting. The crowd got yeah. involved before yeah. you knew it. The energy in that play was yeah, <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And the, the captain was extraordinary today as well. He was he was absolutely sensational. It was absolutely no knock on him. He was he really lifted when he needed to. And oh, credit to Weidering as well. He was absolutely stuffed. He could barely run. He had a mattress on his over his thigh or, or whatever, whatever he corked. I think it was a cork quad or a cork tammy or whatever it was. But um, I, lo- I didn't mind Jack Carroll's cameo in moments. I thought he got really involved as well. I was really impressed with his performance. Durden popped up. And I think Durden was one of those ones as well where, remember, against Fremantle, he had the eight tackles. But he didn't kick a goal. He didn't hit the scoreboard. And we had a chat about him saying that if he, if he continues to do that, week in and week out, the score will eventually tick over. Because those type of selfless, selfless things that you commit to, eventually you'll be rewarded on the stat sheet and, and by your team, right? And I thought I thought he had, he took his moments really well today. I know he had that flying shot on the run that really would have completely asked the game and he probably deserved to kick, to kick it. But he went back with the flight in a big moment too. He had two big blokes coming towards him and he had to go. And he did. And, uh, yeah, very, very impressive. Harry and Charlie were really, really good. I thought Lee Kalia, um, that battle between him and Harry was really, really good. That was a really good battle, that. I was really impressed with Aaliyah. For yeah. Them. Really, really impressed with him. That was a really good battle. Harry probably just got the better of him in the end. Um, but just a great team display. I thought Ollie Hollands was really good. Really, really liked his game. Kicked, he kicked a really important goal. Yeah, a very, moment. very important goal. Real steadier for us as well, just to keep the scoreboard ticking over. And that was a good, a very, very strong performance. All started by the man in the middle, Mark Pitten, and he set the tone at the contest. And now we've found out, and what we've been saying since the start of the season, that we know how to score both ways and we know how to win both ways through 
scores from stoppage and and scores from turnover. Try stopping That's us now. Formula. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we are now about to go into, I mean, it's all perspective. You either look at it one way or the other way, and yes. I get that. You either look at yeah. it as the next four weeks, tough teams. The way I look at it, yeah. the next three weeks, we're at the fucking MCG back at where yeah. he should be played. So, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, bring that on. Yeah, no, spot on. And I think, and I was saying this to Nick as well on our, our podcast here at work, mm-hmm. that um, and he was saying to Rocco on Mars too, that if you... I think people were, it's, you know, when you, and this is just, I think this is just with anything. If you look at the, if you look too far ahead, the picture becomes so big that you almost become daunted by it. Yeah. And I think that's what happened with a lot of us is that we see these injuries, right? And we look at the next five week block and we think, oh, GWS, Geelong, Collingwood, blah, 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 Sydney, whatever, right? And when you look at their form right now, and it can just be too daunting. And you can overwhelm. I think you, you overwhelm yourself, and I think a few of us did that during the week as well. But if you just, I, don't, I know it's cliche. I know it sounds, but it is so true. You just one training session at a time, one recovery session at a time, one match at a time. You just focus on the Giants. You win that, move on from that, recover well, and now our focus goes into training for Geelong. We don't, we don't, we don't even worry about Collingwood. Don't even worry about Collingwood now. Our next focus is to recover. And move on to Geelong, who were putting up a pretty good fight at the moment. They're up by two points at half time against Brisbane up there in the wet. So that's going to be another tough game. It's going to be another tough game, you know. And I, it's one thing to criticise a bloke like Mark Pitt in it as well, but you know, I I heard today as well when when his name got announced, there were a few boos in the stand, and I don't want it like wow, well, before, like it's just disgraceful, honestly, just disgraceful, just disgraceful. You know, the bloke, do, do we trust Nick Austin, the man who's got a lot of our list management right? And I know we've got a few un, unreliable players with regards to injury, but th- there's a reason they signed him for four years, right? Are you going to put credence in his decision-making or are you going to put credence in people who spend two hours a week watching the football? They're not around list management. That's not their role. They're armchair experts and they come up with opinions on the fly, right? They don't know the intricacies of it. They don't know why he's been signed up. And all elite teams, all premiership teams, all Premier League winning teams, all NBA championship teams, they have players like this, Tez. They've got players like this. They're like the glue of the team. They're like the fabric. They just set a standard. They may not be the best player. They may not be superstars. But they just come in and they do their job every bloody week, whether that's at training, whether that's during recovery, whether that's during a weight session. They keep the morale up. And he's one of those players, mate. You need players like him on your list. You need players like him in your squad. It's as simple as that. And this is what I mean when I keep saying, what, what, what is the best 22? Tell me what the best 22 is. Is the best 22 the 22 we just put out on the park that produced the best performance of the season against an undefeated GWS team? Is this our best 22 now? It's a good point. You, know what I mean? you need a squad. You need a squad. That's what you need. And that's why a bloke like him has been signed up. You know, and Briggs has been really good this year for the Giants. And you know, he had his colours lowered today and our midfield went head-to-head with, you know, this orange tsunami, this Ferrari that's been dubbed like it's going to go around like Michael Schumacher every year. You know, we, we showed them up. The captain was phenomenal against Green. The two big balls went at it and our fella came out on top. And I thought George Hewitt was phenomenal as well today. My goodness, geez, he's so clean around the ball with his hands and his strength as well. And, and you know what I noticed too? There are a few little moments where we were just niggling at them. I like that. I really, really like that. Green didn't get under our skin. Hogan tried to hook Young. He didn't really react. He just got back into the swing of things. And I don't know if Green will miss a week. Hogan will miss a week. But what he did he punched Young, I don't know Lewis Young, saw. didn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. He clocked, he clocked he Lewis, Lewis Young over the head. So, you know, they were rattled, mate. They were fair dinkum rattled. So, That's probably another guy as well. Um, Lewis Young, who had to go on to Hogan in the second half because Weedering yeah. was just hindered. I thought, yeah. I mean, his stats don't look amazing, Lewis Young, but I thought he played his role today exactly how he needed to. Yeah, yeah, mate. Just, just don't need to do anything pretty, mate. <laughs> yeah. It just, you don't need to do anything pretty. Just body tight, shirt tight, stay with him the whole game. Um, I thought Akers was sensational today. Really liked his game. Really, really liked Akers. Just the whole the whole team was great, mate. And so good. The whole team was good. And, <laughs> mate, I'll, I'll end it with this. Sam Walsh, I mean... <laughs> this man is just <laughs> look whatever happened with his back who knows right 
he is just an incredible footballer. <laughs> he's just, and now he's got the zing pass going. He's got the he's got the zing that that ball he laced out to was it Durden? I think it was to Durden. It was. It was. It was. Oh God! Everything was going at a million miles an hour, and he just went, "No, I'm going to hit Durden, and lace out." And he had, you know, I love those moments when he grabs the ball and, and Pommy and I speak about this all the time, that beautiful U-turn he does around stoppage. It's just a thing of beauty. He's, he's a spectacular player. I think we have to end the, end the debate around people his age. Yeah. He's the real Slim Shady. <laughs> no. Very, 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 very spot on, Mr. Sebastiani. He's just, he's just incredible. <clears throat> I'm going to let you go. We've got to set right, up for work tonight. But uh, we've got footy talk back tonight. So after this, after the fan cams, mate, Tune in to SEN. John Donahoe and I, we're going to be taking all the calls at around about 10.30. So I don't know if you're going to be going on for the next two hours. I doubt it. Or maybe you will be. But maybe call up if you want to have a chat to me as well after all of this. Sounds good. Thanks, Paolo. Hey, you, Blueies. Hold on. Look at him. (laughs) Up the baggers. Up the baggers. Thank you, mate. (laughs) Amazing. Webby, let's talk, mate. <laughs> Who's that for next, mate? Who's next, my friend? I don't know, mate. You just bring him on one at a time. You just keep handballing them to me, and we'll just go out, go at it, mate. I want to ex- 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 expand on what Paul said there about the best twenty-two. He's 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 spot on. Like to win a flag, to contend, you need a squad of thirty to thirty-two where players can just come in and play a role. That's what happened today. That's what happened. Cowan comes in. He plays a role. But Patrick Cripps, my my boy Patrick Cripps, beast mode Patrick Cripps. No, sorry. Daddy Patrick Cripps. That was a daddy performance. Was was, was back today. He was was back today. Yeah. He, um... uh, what a player. We are blessed. Yeah. We we are blessed watching Patrick Cripps and for Christ's sake, can we please keep Sam Walsh fit? This guy is an animal. He's an animal. It he doesn't need a preseason. Don't worry about it. Well Put I think also with, I think also with Walsh, I think I don't know. I'm just going to put it out there. Maybe the way that they were cautious with the way that they brought him back and gave him a little bit of extra time, maybe that's good management. I don't know. Maybe he wasn't injured. I don't know. No, no. Maybe he did get injured, but maybe they were extra cautious with him coming back into the team. And I don't know. I haven't seen much talk around the the credit for making sure that he was fully ready to go when he came back in the team. And now we're watching two two of his best games. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. 100%. 100%. You know. Pitto Ned in the ruck. My boy Pitto. Bro. Everyone no. doubted him. Everybody doubted no. Pitto Ned. Do you know what it is? I, I think we, we, we're a bit short-sighted. Like, Pitto is not a bloke that just comes in and plays his best footy. He, he, he builds. And he's not going to play every week. There will be matchups where it doesn't suit him to play. I just don't understand the discourse around like the panic around him. I thought it was really unfair to him. He was immense and he allowed Tom to go forward without yeah. a worry. And we completely dismantled arguably the best team in the comp at that stoppage. I just think, I just think after last week, there was a bit of PTSD from this time last year where we went on that run. The injuries came. Sard got injured. Chero, et cetera, et cetera. Just calm down, people. Calm down. We play a system. Got to back them in. Yeah. Got to trust them. Surely, yeah. they, surely these boys have now earned our trust. The club has now earned our trust. Just, just yeah. relax. Yeah. Just I think, you know what's an important test? When we lose. It's easy to jump off when we lose. You're going to lose games, though, Tess. You're going to lose yeah. games of football. Yeah, you are. Got to gotta just stay strong, stronger together. That's our motto. 
and move on now to Geelong. It it doesn't get any easier from here. So we just we just go again. We pack it up, out baggers. We're MCG. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Six and one. Webby, this is for you, my friend. Cheers. Thank you, mate. Enjoy your night, won't you? I will. Go Blues. Go Blues, mate. We'll star. Ben G, let's talk. Hey, mate. How are you? Much better this week. <laughs> a bit better than last week, that's for sure. Yeah. There's a bit of a pattern emerging. I mean, it's two weeks, but, you know, what was it? 28 scoring shots last week. Mm -hmm. 32 scoring shots. I've got to have to look at the numbers. I don't remember that many scoring shots from this group in a, in a while. Um, yeah. We're generating opportunities. Yeah, we really we are. Um, we are generating generating opportunities, and um, yeah, we, it was a powerful brand of footy today. Uh, Crips and Walsh, my gosh, yep, like they were that good that they made Charlie TDK and Harry look like decoys, and th they played fantastic games as well. They were that good. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was phenomenal to see Cripps's his impact in the middle, and then just I, I don't know how many times he would have handballed to Walsh, and then streaming up forward and getting the big blokes delivering it on a silver platter. Um, no, it was it was great to watch, and yeah, it's uh, it's very exciting uh, moving forward if we can keep that up. Um, yeah. yeah, it's looking good. Were you at the game today? No, I wasn't. I'm I'm actually I'm in Adelaide. So, oh right, um, right, yep, yeah. Um, I'm based based here in Adelaide, but um, oh, I went to went to the gather round a couple of weeks ago, which was good. But um, nah, uh, watching watching Sheeran flying the flag over here. Um, what, what did you in terms of in terms of wins? Um, where would you where would you rank that from from what you've seen so far? I mean. We've, we've we've had some good wins, but that's that's pretty good, right? I think in the context of what the week, what the game was, Weedering getting hurt, Williams going off, a little bit decimated with um, some top line. I mean, you lose you lose two of your best defenders in guard, uh, Sard and guard, <laughs> Sard and McGovern. <laughs> um, yeah. You lose Williams at halftime, who I thought was doing a really good job on Toby Green, and I think the context of that yeah. and the fact that the Giants were lethal and looked. Look like they were just too good. Um, yeah, that's right up there. Right, it's it's right. Up. Also, my sister was with me. It was just the two of us, and we were just having a ball. So that's one of the better ones, no doubt. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll tell you, I would, would have loved to have been there. I've seen many great bloody MCG and um, Eddie had ga or Marble uh, games now uh, in the past. Um, I was from Melbourne originally, but. Um, yeah, nah. Uh, oh, GWS, they were, they were looking really, really good in that second quarter, and then yeah, to turn it around like like we did, uh, I think we showed like uh, the same with Brisbane, the Brisbane game um, opening round. We get on that, we just have one quarter where we just blitz and turn it on. I don't know, it's almost like we this this very very good side in GWS who have won you know so many games in a row like like we had probably probably arguably i'd say even more impressive than uh, how we've been and i'm full credit love what we've done yeah we um we turned it up a notch man and um yeah it's uh i i, I think um you know i think we can start to really dream hopefully we can um keep keep a good run with injury from from now on but um yeah yeah. Squad mentality. As long as we keep all our best folks in the park, um, no, nah, bring it on, mate. Uh, I think uh, it's going to be really, really exciting year ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the other point. I mean, so th there's probably two games out of the the six that we've played that I think are of note. So Brisbane, we get the best version of Brisbane in that first half, and we're able to yeah. come out of it with a win. We got the best of the Giants in the first half, let's be honest. They were clinical and we were still able to yeah. get the game back on our terms. And 
I think that's important because Resolve. there can be no doubt about both of those wins because we we were let's be honest we were getting beaten up uh, maybe not so much by the Giants compared to the Lions they were up forty six whatever it was but the the, the Giants yeah. in that second quarter it just looked insurmountable in certain moments so to be able to turn that game on its head knowing that you're playing the better team in the competition and they're dominating you is I think an important step now we've got a long way to go but I think it's an important yeah. step along the way. Yeah. No, absolutely, mate. Could, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, and, yeah, who knows? We might be um, seeing them in another big game later in the year. Um, but, yeah, let's 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 continue um, continue doing what we're doing because uh, I think, you know, um, I think we're pretty even with some of the best sides, but those big blokes, if we can just – I think they're a point of difference, mate, and I think that could separate us. Yeah. It's crossed from uh, some of the other really good teams out there because it's it's a it's a fierce competition, but it's um no, it's pretty exciting, mate. Let, let's uh let's yeah. keep it rolling. Yeah, absolutely, mate. You enjoy your evening. Um, go Blues. See you next week. You, you too, Tez. Catch you later. See ya. See ya. Light work, really. To be honest, yeah, just just what we do, isn't it? It's just what we do. How are you? Did you um, did you think of me at half time? Yes. 12, 12 players with no tackles. tackles. Twelve players with no tackles. <laughs> and I, I was, I, when I saw that, uh, Joe from Always Blues Runners right tweeted it. I go, holy fuck, that's so funny because we we're literally speaking about it this week. Yeah. How. How funny. But, I mean, it never felt like that was the case, though, right? No. I, I was surprised I, I, to see I, it. I think, I think the theory, the theory, the kind of way that I kind of rush it, rationalised it um, is the reason we weren't tackling is because we were getting to the ball first, like basically every time. Mm -hmm. It's just that what we are doing around that was the issue. Um, whereas in 21, it was just like, oh, we can't get to the ball and we can't tackle. That's not good. Whereas if I felt like we we're like dominating center clearances, dominating contested touches, we were just getting to the ball first and they just, we just weren't tackling for whatever reason. Um, I think the Giants also played a relatively more uncontested game than what they normally do, um, to try and, to try and work us off our feet, but we did well regardless. But, um, yeah, no, it was very funny. Very, very funny when I saw that. But um, how are you? How are you feeling? How are you? I can see. Yeah, you, good. Um, I had, I had an rocks. amazing. Yeah, yeah, no, no rocks, mate. Straight. Oh, just straight. Oh, sorry, he's asshole. Sorry, mate. Mate, we're, we're straight, in our thirties yeah. now, mate. We're not, we're not nineteen anymore, mate. We're thirty. Yeah, I've got, oh, yeah, I've got, I've got. What is it? Uh, Twenty-seven years to go till I'm there. Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I had. One of my favorite times at the footy. I was with Steph, with sister. She was just the two of us. We were like little kids. Just, ah, <laughs> oh. it's honestly that's what it's all about, though, isn't it? You go with your family or yeah. your friends, whatever. Like it's just the best. The escapism, it's great. And when and when it, it helps when seven in a row. I don't think I can count that high. And we got seven. Seven kicks. Did we kick seven oh, in a row? Yeah, I think, it was, I think it was. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it was six. I think it was. I think it was thirty-seven to zero, in like the second portion of that third quarter. It was a blur. I'm gonna have to go back and watch it. I think because like, the first three, you're like, okay, we're getting ourselves back in the game. Then, uh, yeah, like you obviously don't know what the result of the game's gonna be because you're still in there. Um, it was but six. It was. It was six in the right. last portion portion of that of that third. Yeah. Oh, you know. <laughs> I mean, we we'd never experienced it, but you know the the, the supporters who watched the Premiership quarter in the the eighties and the nineties. Can you imagine what that would have been like every week? Yeah, it's pretty scary. It would yeah. have been pretty cool. It would have been pretty cool, and then going on to do it and just having the expectation of that happening. Every and like week. they know it was going to happen in the third yeah. quarter, and then like to see it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, just insane. Um, a lot, went, a lot was going wrong and then a lot went really right. It was kind of the complete 180 in the space of about 15 minutes, which I thought was a pretty um, – if, if you had told me kind of before the game how we're going to beat the Giants, I always thought it'd be 
we needed a 15, 20 minute patch where we just turn it on and hopefully that could get us over the line. I didn't think we'd be able to grind them down. And I think the way that they approached the game was up uh, was the smart way to do it. They were really uncontested from at least what yeah. I saw. I haven't really checked the stats, but um yeah. it's amazing what we can do when we get our one wood back at that clearance yeah. game. It was on. On. Yeah. Even you know what else? I thought in the fourth quarter, obviously the game's on our terms. We're up by four goals, maybe 29 at this point. The Giants kick one. I thought our game management was a step better than what we saw last week. Like We didn't quite go into our shells, but we also found ways to take 35 seconds off the clock where we could. Yeah. Um, and that's why it was so important not to panic last week because it's a long season. Yeah, you're going to fuck it up. You've got to learn the next week and you've got to let them learn. Yeah. I, th- I, th- so. I, think, we, I think it was a mature... A lot, a lot, a lot a mature way to see out the game. I um, yeah, there you go. Both you um, the light at the end of the tunnel, Ari. Look at us, mate. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, I thought. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I thought a lot of a lot of when you like kind of come back, and I think we experienced this as well a little bit in kind of twenty one and maybe even as far back as nineteen, where we got those like six, five, six, seven goal runs in a row. It felt like it was a a little bit immature, like he's just like it, not immature because that's discrediting it, but like we just went and there was no kind of real substance behind it. It was just like a 20 minute patch of momentum that we just capitalized on. Where I felt like there was portions within that kind of stretch of goals that we had where it was like, oh, this is a really mature way of going about it. I remember, I think it was the the, the, the conning goal. I said the, the conning goal, kick three of them. Um, I think it was the one in the third where Akers and Young had it kind of on the wing defensive half defensive flank they were corralled on the boundary line and they could, one of them easily could have just gone and blazed away but they worked their way through it the boy ended up getting over the top to always who, who, who laced out tom it was a great kind of it felt like we were figuring it out we we'll literally if, if we could see the chess pieces move in real time as the players were figuring out what to do next i mm. thought it was i thought that was like a a, a moment I mean, we spoke about moments last week with cripper getting dawson and um Carroll standing underneath that ball. I thought Boyd not shirking that contest and embracing the contact is is another thing which, from a supporter, you kind of sit back and go, yeah, that's that that's good signs. I think it's great yeah. signs. You can't question these guys and their commitment, and I think that's probably the most important thing. As long as they're committed to the task at hand, you're going to win, you're going to lose. Um, today it worked out well for us. Next time it might not. Uh, I'm also just seeing here Tom Stewart won't play next week because he has been – he's had a head clash and he won't play next week. So well, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm currently not watching that game. I'm watching um, West Coast be seven goals up to Freo. That's footy. That is footy. Um, um, also, did you get my text just quietly? <laughs> I did get your text. Yeah. Okay. okay don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't, mate, what am I? I'm professional. <laughs> no, I just wanted to. I just wanted to. I just wanted to. Yes, I did get your text, mate. Uh, yeah. Just, okay. just, just, I saw you. Just, that's all. I just wanted to. Just, just, just keep things offline um, that should be offline. <laughs> um, just looking forward to the next kind of month and a bit, five games. Mm. Where was this? If we're talking, if we were looking in terms of like percentage of the games that we had in like the next month of winning to loss ratio where was this before this week and in comparison to the other games and where are the other games now i don't know it's up there it's up there yeah were you were, was this one of the games you knew which you were more or less confident in because i i i wouldn't say oh, I'm confident. oh man really? i was com- i promise i promise before the game i, I did not get he, sucked he, in look everyone can believe what in they fairness, want you did, in fairness you did message me saying that we were winning when you said um, that thing in the morning. I'm you at this point win. now with this group and this club that it didn't matter who was there. I thought the conversation around who wasn't there and the conversation around strength and conditioning was way too far in that basket that we needed to just be brought back to center a little bit. Injuries suck. They're going as hard as they can. You're going to lose soldiers. But if if we're going to criticize strength and conditioning because we're losing players, why do don't why don't we give credit to strength and conditioning for the way that we ran out that game today? We always seem to only talk about it when we're pissed off about it, as opposed to when it looks good. And I it's just me, think we got yeah. way too caught up in that. And I was confident that we would put in a good showing. 
it's a sensation it's maybe not sensationalism of it all but it's the amplifying of the very passionate way that we support that like ninety thousand of us plus support when it's good i mean we saw it last year and this is kind of a conversation that we've had countless times we saw it last year when it was going really well and nothing could go wrong and then last week it felt like the world kind of ended and everything was going wrong and all of a sudden you need to sack these players and these players need to be dropped and why is this happening and etc etc and it it, it it will always happen it will continue to happen because it shouldn't though it shouldn't yeah, i know but it, but it will but it will and you know it will and you because like i, I mean, am an optimist and i believe that we can turn that around okay think rationally come on well i can guarantee and but it's about but it's about the response and and in in you know in all honesty and in reality it doesn't matter what we think about it it's about what the players are like we can't kind of i mean we can dictate aspects of games to a very 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 minimal extent but in reality it's the players who who are at the control of everything so if they they now know and they're now aware of the way that we as a fan base are very emotional both when we're going really well when we're going really bad it's about how they can use that energy for good i mean we saw it today it felt like it felt like it was a it felt like it, it all was simmering kind of midweek and then it just kind of exploded in that like 20 minute patch and that is the energy that we need to kind of use and, and all the players i should say need to yeah. use when it does go bad to then respond and, and respond well because the giants as well were coming into this game with a point to prove as well because they didn't exactly dominate against the saints last week right yep. and they had injuries of their own and they have issues of their own so they'll look into make a statement we weren't this wasn't this is our biggest scalp this is the best team we've beaten maybe since Collingwood last year even because I, I think this team is better than than both the teams we played in the finals I think this team is better than Brisbane this year maybe since Collingwood last year but then in Collingwood we weren't going great at that time this is probably the best yeah. team we've beaten in a long time right it's, and, honestly yeah. I'm looking at it now it's one of the better it is, it is. what we did to Toby the Green are really good like I think I don't think I, I honestly think because they aren't a big club and because like yeah. there was three of their supporters here today people don't like if you watch like if you watch the way the Giants played last week against the Saints in fairness it didn't end well for them but they're yeah. really good like the Giants are really really good and the way that we were able to dismantle them from the middle and also in transition in that in that in that second half essentially was exceptional. Like I know granted no Taylor's a big loss and no Cornelia, but then again, I mean, we've got half our best half our best twenty two out, so that's a, a mute point. But yeah, this is a great win, an unbelievable win. And the way that we did it as well, we didn't crawl over the line, it was emphatic. Mate. Well said. Uh, did we do anything to the Giants in 1995 that you can recollect? Fortunately, not. Not not directly to the Giants. Surprisingly, I know. Is but there a stat that you can find to this? Yes. What do you got? No, well, you, you sounded you sounded like you doubted me. No, I was building uh, it up. You just ruined oh, the sorry. whole. No, you just literally just went all. Sorry, ego cut. On. Edit, edit edit this. You went all ego <laughs> on it, and you took offense. You typical Greek. Go on. Ari, let's start again. Yeah, okay. I wonder, Ari. I wonder if there is a stat that could be found. Well, well, you know? Terry. Thank. You. Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, the last time there actually is the last time um, Carlton's number twenty kicked two goals in a round six game was 1995. Well, I'll drink to that. Yes, and so I didn't have to. I, I did have to scroll through some names. Surprisingly, I did skip over Lockie Plowman. Just because. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I've forgotten something. Can you say that stat again? Why? Just do it, please. Okay. Uh, the last time a Carlin's number twenty kicked exactly two goals in a round six game was nineteen ninety five. Thanks, Ari. <laughs> I'm, I'm not rocking up on, on Tuesday or Wednesday whenever we're doing reflections. You Don't absolutely you. are. You absolutely are. I know. I are. You're with yeah. it. Speak soon. All right, mate. Take care. All right. I've got Toby, Andy, Zach Borg, Wayne and Pop. Zach, you look like you're on a train. I'm going to wait until you're not on a train. Okay? Wayne and Pops, let's talk.
Hey, just a sec, I'll go to Dad now. He's, um, well, we only just got back. Sorry. We were, uh, oh, man. Oh, how can you feel it? Oh, man, I just want to dance my whole life away, man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, it was so dang good. And you know what? I didn't, my heart only pounded for about five seconds. And then I just realized, oh, yeah, everything's fine. Everything's okay. Oh, this this poor lady last week in the Adelaide game. I wanted I wanted to bring on last week, but I think I was out of it last week. This poor lady was getting abused from because the elevators were not working. And guess yeah. what? The elevators weren't working either at Marvel Stadium on the sixth side. There was one out of order. Yeah. So you know the crowd getting out was crazy. So I thought, you know what? We're going to go into the rooms at the end, and we had a beer, sat down on. This lovely furniture in the Legends Lounge was great. Oh. Mate, and what about the just game? The game. Man. Oh, mate. Like, man, I feel like dancing. I feel like strutting my stuff, going down the road and maybe driving back to Ligon Street and enjoying the party. <laughs> but um, now I've got to better look after the old man. Oh, my God. That third quarter. Oh. Mate, that, that that really set the stage for me. I was I was in another world. It was it was the world of pure imagination. Like I was eating chocolate and I was sharing chocolate around with people during halftime because I was like, We're gonna win, we're gonna do it. So just stay the course, we're good. Oh the bug is telling that dummy. How magical was it uh, when it all came together and the crowd got involved and the boys kept kicking uh, goals? Yeah, and it wasn't just that, but our clearance was like it was like having five David Cunninghams in the side. It was just nice having people, you know, handballing it to each other. It felt great. Yeah. He's uh, finally here performing for you. How are you, Jerry? Pops, mate, how good was that? Yeah. Absolutely brilliant, mate. Right? And that's what we expected in the third quarter when we won those premierships. That's what we felt like. So you just felt like that, well, that's what we used to get every week. Mate, that's, that, that's what that the euphoria, the euphoria and the just exhilaration as they just went bang, 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 bang. Well, my my heart sank in the first quarter with those Harry Harry and Charlie misses, but I knew I was like, it's all right, we'll get some more chances. Yeah. Um, I think I liked, what I liked the most was the fact that in that third quarter, when we kicked those goals, even the first quarter, we were lowering our eyes and hitting people to our advantage in front, not up in the air. And the forwards were moving all night, apart from the second yeah. quarter, but all night. And that's why we we're getting those shots at goal because they were just lowering the eyes and kicking it to our advantage. We've been yep. trying to get that for the last three or four years. And they finally clicked. Yeah. yeah. They had a little bit had of a, maybe a bit of a wake up call last week with their inefficiency. And you just saw them be a little bit more focused with ball in hand in transition yep. up the targets. But was we just to just get, did he just get a, um, a, um, a corky, a or, corky or something on his thigh because he had it strapped. I don't know. I, I ha he had it strapped. I, I actually saw. I was watching him from where I was sitting, and I thought at some point he had done a hammy the way he was grabbing his the back of his leg. I didn't know if that was maybe just the way his leg was taped. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Ross has probably had his press conference. They might have asked him. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping it was just a corky, but he was definitely hobbling for the entire second half. Did you hear? Did you see what happened to Zach Williams? I did not. Well, what happened was in that second quarter, he was going for the ball uh, uh, with his opponent and the opponent mm. pushed him and landed on his calf, landed on the back of his leg. Right. And he got up and he was limping. So I'm hoping he hasn't done that bloody calf again. Oh. Fingers crossed. And I saw Fingers him crossed. limping at the end of the game. Yeah. So, so I reckon anyway, we'll be fine. If he if, if he goes out, Shin Cotter's the next one to come in, mate. <laughs> Absolutely. So he'll mate, fill another gap up. just like Corn did. 
Yep, Mate. just like Cowan did. Squads and win Pitto's flags. game, that's the best he's played. Pitto's best game he's played for us, I think. Yep. He just destroyed the centre and let our blokes shepherd. You know, we shepherded the our blokes and we just got the ball out. We won uh, 19 to 12, I think we was, the centre bounces or centre clearances or something. Yeah. Yeah. So he was just a man mountain. And the three goals from TDK and the to-do small forwards, Dirds and your boy Dirds, and um, <laughs> and um, Owies, that pass that wow. hit, hit – um, Walsh hit, hit Owies, I think. Was it Walsh that hit Owies? I think I've, so. I've it got was. to check the replay again. And Elijah was brilliant. Oh, dude. Absolutely wrapped. Hollands to Hollands again. <laughs> I hope Toby Green gets rubbed out for more than a couple of weeks after what he did. Was it Pitto that he hit? Oh, I thought it was, um, I thought it was Boydie. No, it was Boydie. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, I hope Green gets rubbed out for that. That was horrid. That was absolutely there horrid. There was no need for it. So I think he was just frustrated, I'd say. Well, if, if, if Christian, to, you know, fair income, he'll get at least one, maybe two. But mm -hmm. knowing he hates Carlton, we'll probably, he'll probably get off. <laughs> uh, at least we didn't have Rosebury today. We didn't have Rosebury yeah. or Williamson. So. Williamson. <laughs> I, didn't like, I didn't like that no, number four. Number power. four power. <laughs> Did you see that throw, Aaliyah? I did not. The third, uh, was it the second quarter? Second quarter? I think it was. We're in the, we're about well, Ten, eight, well, eight nine metres, metres away from the goal. The, the goal square. Aaliyah got on the, went, grabbed the ball, and he's, uh, he just stood like that. The umpire, number four, was standing right there, didn't pay it. Oh. <laughs> and they went down, and it oh, should have wow. been a free kick to us. Went down the other end and they kicked the goal. So there was a 12 point turnover. We should have had a goal directly in front from 25 metres out. Yeah. Watch it on the replay. That's why it's important to just keep going. Yeah, uh, that's right. You know, sometimes it doesn't go your way. You get an umpire call, it's wrong. Um, you know, look, but, I'm I mean, not look, complaining generated... about the umpires, but, you know, just be a bit more consistent. If you play it for one team, pay it for the other. Yeah, that's all I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, but it's right what, we, we are 32 scoring shots for 17 goals. If we can just up that up to 60 70 percent conversion, we, we might see a score of 140 150 this year. Oh, here's hoping. Well, the way the forwards moved around and gave themselves targets, there's no reason why we can't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, all's good in love and war, Terry. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, man. We'll let Good you know. Thank, Thank you very much. Through. Man, I am hype. So the hype is right. <laughs> Say the baggies. Go to the baggers, man, and have yeah, a good boy. one, everyone. Cheers. Yeah, mate. <laughs> How good. How good. Toby. Jerry. How are you, Matt? Mate, as good as could be. <laughs> <laughs> so am I, Matt. After going last week, and uh, leaving Marvel a bit disappointed last week. But tonight, I thought our ball movement was a lot better. And we hit our targets and we moved. We didn't just stand there and go, oh, yeah, we're coming. We better move. We'll hit a target. And it was beautiful to watch tonight. It was. It, was. <clears throat> it really was. And, Matt, I can agree with you going to the footy when Carlton supporters are up and about. It is so good, Matt. So good. Last week, I was sitting up on level three when we played Adelaide, and I, every time Carlton kicked a goal, who, who do you reckon started a Carlton chant? I reckon that You're might have been you, folks. Yeah, I You're reckon. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. No, and look, it was, it was a good win. It was an important win. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've got a, a nice stretch coming up now against the best teams on paper anyway in the comp. And, uh, you know, away we go, mate. That We've just got to keep ticking along week by week. 
Exactly. And it's it's just as people have been saying to you, Terry, one week at a time. Don't think too far ahead. Because as I've told you before, Terry, if you think too far ahead, then your mindset changes. Yeah. We have got like okay, we didn't have Sard and McGovern tonight. Yeah, okay. But we are getting wins without good players in our team. We can yeah. do it. And it's just the belief as Carlton supporters to see that makes you feel really good. And we should stay behind the boys and get behind him and be as loud as we can at the ground. Because if we're playing like that, then the boys start to believe. They start to pick up on that confidence. If we're confident, they're confident. Yeah. I think the challenge is when we're not going so well, can we generate energy then? Because it seems like, I mean, I get it. <clears throat> if there's nothing to get excited about on the field, it's hard to generate energy in the crowd. Um, mm. So I think the responsibility is, it goes two ways. The boys have to kind of start it on the field. We will latch onto it and and add to it. Um, the challenge is when we're not going so well and they need a little bit of a pick-me-up, can we become a crowd that can do it then? Um, but maybe maybe with time, that'll happen. Oh, it, it, it happens progressively, Terry. It will happen slowly, but we'll see it, man. We'll see it. Because, yeah. like, it's... How can I put it? It goes in waves and flows. Mm. So if you're feeling really good, you're feeling really happy, yeah? Mm -hmm. If you're not feeling really good and flat and kind of going, oh, yeah, we're Carlton supporters, you know, we lost again. Well, okay, let's change that. How can we change that? What can we do as supporters and as to help the team? What can we learn from it? What do we take away? Yeah, okay. All right, sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. That's sport. That's sport. Right. That's the way of life. And you look at it that way. Yeah? No, I like it, mate. I like it, Toby. So we got we've got the cats next week, 435 at the MCG. I hope to see mm -hmm. you again after that. Oh Matt, I'll be here. I'll All be right. here. All I'm right. going nowhere, yeah. Matt. You know this. And I'm it. sorry that I haven't been on over the last couple of weeks. I've just oh, been man. super busy. Um okay. but it's fine. It's good to be back and after baggers. After baggers. bagger. Love you, Tobes. Take care, mate. Right up, Blues. <laughs> Andy, hello, mate. Ah, when the football season comes around again and our fans are storming to the grounds again, there's a kind of fever keeps us on our toes. Hear the fans are roaring as the whistle blows. Though it's pouring and your team's behind. Still, you never throw in the glove. Cause it's football season. And that's the reason it's the time of the year that we love. Come on, Blues! Come on! Well. Oh. Hey, that was a leak. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I had that. In this me, I had this system in me for like in an hour. I kept thinking about that song right from when the final siren ended. My, my hands are jittering still. It's like, I don't know how to express that everyone else hasn't expressed already. That game was unreal. Well, I think you did. I don't think anyone's come on and sang a song from scratch like you just did. That was fantastic. Mate, that was based on the Fable Singers. The, wow. the, the same guys that built from amongst many Victorian clubs in the league in terms of their songs. Yeah. Classic ones, may I add. Mate, tell me. I mean, I think we've touched on a lot of the, the better players tonight. Hmm. Who was an unsung hero that we um, haven't really touched unsung. on yet? I mean, okay. Um, Lucky Cohen was one I honestly think had a lot of promise. I like that one. Cohen, um, Brody Kemp, um, Jacob like Wittering. Yeah, Mr. Wittering. Um, there is a lot to go off. Charlie, Harry, Kripa, Kerno. Oh, I mentioned Charlie. Um, 
they're all the names that got mentioned. I was, I was just, yeah, I, I like, I like Cowan. I, I was really curious to see where his development was at because he, we haven't really heard much about him. Hmm, yeah, he's been awfully quiet like, for some time, but I'm happy he's finally got a very solid game in him. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, he's been playing in the reserves and I'm sure he's been training hard, but because there were so many other players ahead of him in the team, uh, he just couldn't get a game. So I was really curious to see how he looked at the level compared to this time last year. It's one game, but looked looked a lot more comfortable, which was good. Yeah, you know, you want to know something? Frustration is a rather fascinating emotion to research about. Mm. Let me explain for a minute. So in terms of when we lose certain games... Sometimes frustration gets the best of us. Sometimes it tends to give, give us major anxiety, right? Well, sometimes we need to defy the impossibles, right? And sometimes lower our eyes and focus on damaging the opposition. Because that sort of mentality could build us for a potential premiership in itself, right? Yeah. And I'll be damned, that performance tonight, I think that was the best Carlton game I've watched since the Brisbane game. To be honest, generally, mm -hmm. I'm just generally really impressed with how they went on about it, considering they lost to such a thriller last week. Which, mind you, I was there. I was at Marvel when that happened. And that was also when I learned. Initially, I was a bit frustrated after that loss. But I learned that some, I felt like neutral about it. I didn't make it such a big deal, to be honest. Yeah. I said, I wanted to move on. I mean, it happens. Life happens, right? You got to move on and just expect better from your yes. guys. And I think also you've got to give him a chance to fix it. They obviously made errors last week, allowed, you know, whatever. It was, we move on from it. It happens, but yeah. It happens. For sure. And sometimes you need to kick up the ass to get your focus back. And I thought <laughs> yeah. tonight was, oh, was a, a lot more of a focus team. So. I, yeah, um, I'd say, I, I mean, I wasn't initially too worried on the side of that side of McGovern are gone because I still have faith in the, in our depth in that list. I've yeah. said this last year as well from what I remember, but if we have a consistent depth across the, across the club from both our research team and our main team, then I say we should, I think I'd say that we should look stable for at least I'd say about five plus years or something. Mm -hmm. It adds mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. It really does add up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, um, I actually remember going before watching this game like today, I watched parts of Michael Voss's press conferences regarding with the game, right? Yeah. And the expressions on his face like told me immediately that he knows that shit's about to go real, right? And he knows. He knows he's up to something. He knows that he's about to build something from this. You learn from the gut you breathe it like a gut, essentially. He mm. knows it already, and they performed expend expensially. Crud. It's a good point. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, mate, <laughs> yep. appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you bringing a song. That's, uh, that's very few people can come on here and bring a song with them. I think you've raised the bar for the fan cam, so I uh, appreciate that. I'm on it. Wow, I'm honored. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well done mate we'll see you next week see well i'll see you next week against the cats at the g same time same place you know where pretty it is pretty much yeah pretty much see all you right then. andy see you mate see bye <laughs> all right zach borg have i got you i don't have zach borg that, that's it he's not here well that is that's the fan cams. That went way too quick. Maybe we can watch the presser. How about we do that? Oh, yeah. We could absolutely watch the presser together. Stand by for a sec. All right. It's a very different type of game to what we've seen the last few weeks. You must be very pleased with the, the second half. Yeah, it was. I mean, the phases of our game come together closer today. Um, early parts of the season, we've had probably two that have been going okay and then one that's been slightly off. Uh, and I'd say early in the game, certainly the way we defended, 
um, or the pressure we could get on the ball wasn't exactly where we needed it to be in the first half. And so we sort of dialed in on that at half time. And, you know, fortunately we were able to turn that around and that gave us some really good looks on the other side of the ball. So no, a really pleasing performance because, you know, in the second quarter we were well and truly up against it. Um, and I think what sort of shows your, I guess, growth as a team is when you can sort of absorb that, um, acknowledge that it's happened, but then be able to lock in and tie back the score by a couple of goals late in that quarter, um, which just gives you a bit of a look at it. So that was actually a really important part, not just the not just the second half. How concerned were you with that pressure, the lack of pressure in the first half? Because it seemed like the contest game was clearly on your side, but then when they had the ball, it seemed, it seemed like they, it was hard for you guys to see. Yeah. No, they're just going end to end. I mean, there was lots of uh, there were lots of opportunities to be able to attack. Um, so we took our moments, but with the incomplete plays, it probably put a bit of pressure on us to be able to defend a bit faster. And um, felt like we tidied that up both with the ball and then also without it. Um, and that certainly helped us get the pressure back on the ball and put the game back into a contest. And um, you know, they're an, they're an impressive side, GWS. Um, they're hard. Um, to try and stop at the best of times. Um, obviously, a very, very good transition team, but um, you know we're able to do pretty well in that space tonight. How influential has Mark Pitnett been since he's come in? Yeah, well, a couple of games. Um, I mean, the more games they play together and the better he's going to be, you know, he has the match fitness. And to be able to play at those games, um, you know, equally with, uh, with Tom being able to play forward and hit the scoreboard, you know, was able to come in and do his part as well. So, you know, it's a good combination. Um, we find that it's a unique strength of ours. So um, to sort of see them both in, in really good form is um, particularly pleasing. Are you, are you philosophically locked in on two rucks? Or is it no, not necessarily. Um, but, you know, if they're forms, you know, form, form says a lot as well. So, and there's a lot of discussion on two rucks or not two rucks. Um, you know, we've got a style of play that we want to play and, um, you know, clearly we had the dominance around the ball today, certainly from centre square bounce we did. Um, but, you know, it was, it was, their games were, were certainly impactful today. How are you seeing that forward line balance with the three tools with Tom down there um, and your slops ground level? Well, hopefully it's another threat, uh, but it's a, it's a continual work on. I mean, we were able to, you know, kick a pretty healthy score um, tonight, so which was, which was really pleasing. But as well, when the ball was, on the floor, we, we got to work and, um, you know, we got the presence where we needed there as well. So, uh, look, there's a few new faces down there. There's a few new bodies um, that we've always had from last year to this year. And, um, you know, obviously with Fantasia being there and Elijah Hollands coming into that part of the ground as well, and then you're sort of playing a different combination at times, what's up forward. So being able to build out that cohesion and that connection um, that they'll need over the course of the year will be important. So games like tonight against a quality defence, um, they're, they're, um, they're good little wins. What's the diagnosis on Zach Williams? Well, Corky's at the moment. So, uh, so yeah, so we just probably took a fairly precautionary approach there. Um, and same with Weeders. So, yeah, so we sort of hope that there's um, certainly nothing there. Matt Kennedy was pretty impressive in defence when yeah. he shifted him back there after subbing out Williams. Do you think you'll have a look at that more, particularly while McGovern's out? Oh, possibly, but I mean, I think at the moment, probably not. Um, but, you know, like we, you need flexibility, clearly, when you lose a defender. We've had that in the last two weeks um, where we've lost a defender and Matty's done it on both occasions, so he's done really well. Um, so for him to be able to slide back, but again, it, you know, what I hope it almost speaks to is that it's next man up, you know, like to be able to take a, a squad approach to it all and um, the guys embrace the roles that we've been given to them. They're getting the jobs done. And um, so that breeds a lot of confidence in the team when others can step in and get their jobs done and they support the person that's coming in next. And you know, obviously we had a couple of new faces down in the back line as well today. Lock Cowan comes in, you know, Lewis Young come in as well. So different mix, but they certainly got the job done. How? Corky, yeah. 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 You looked a bit sort of cocky. Yeah, too concerned, just a cocky. <laughs> no, it was. It was huge effort uh, because, you know, his mobility wasn't fantastic. Uh, but he just hung in there. Um, so as he does and didn't complain once and just got on with it. And no ill effects for Boyd after that, going back with the flight and taking that? No, 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 not at all. Um, not that I'm aware of. But, uh, look, I think what that was a really important role for us. Tonight. You know, he's, uh, Green's a, 
a wonderful player, um, very dangerous player. And, and Zach had first dibs at it. And, um, you know, our, our defensive coach, Aaron Hamill, sort of said that he thinks Boyd was up for the task. And um, so credit goes to, to him and Boydie for taking on that job. And he did a great job. He did a really great job for a guy who hasn't played a lot of footy and for him to be able to take it on was um, was really impressive. What was your take on the collision itself? I, this, I can honestly say this, that because I sit on the interchange bench, I don't get the benefit of replays. So um, I'll like you. You've probably had a look in slow motion. You could probably tell me, but no, I couldn't. I couldn't give you any insight there. Did you build um, Harry and Charlie in the second half? Kind of did go for the same ball as much as they were getting in each other's way a little bit on the first half? Maybe, uh, maybe a little bit. I, I think if you look across the season, I think they've found, you know, um, they're getting separation really well. Uh, so, you know, that's sort of credit to them and taking that sort of team approach and sort of type of system that we need to be able to play and they step up when it's their turn. So, um, I hope that's sort of something that's a trait that we're all trying to achieve, not just not just Charlie and Harry. Um, and we all get the benefit from it, hopefully. Um, and certainly talking to those two, um, they love playing with each other. And, you know, obviously they've got a lot of looks tonight and they're able to capitalise on different at times. But, um, you yeah, know, we obviously need them. They're important players to our team. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Up and about. All right, last one. Zach. Hey, Terry. How are you, man? Good, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Um, sorry, but um, I was on the tram before, so uh, you know, it was a bit, it was a bit, it was a bit loud and stuff like that. But um, yeah. Well, what's there to say? Like, it was like we, it was a great win. I mean, like um, that second half was huge. Like, like the way that like our, our defense was good. I don't think that that. Like we, we dominated in the midfield, like, like the clearances. Like I think they only had like ten for the, ten set of clearances for the match. Was it Terry? Uh, I don't know exactly what they had for the match. We were. Hang on, I think I would look. We were at all over them. Twenty-two to eight center clearances. Mm, yeah, about that. And how good was Crips? Batman and Robins, him and Walsh. Oh my goodness, Terry! What a win! And honest, and like. Next week, you know, it was a, it's going to be a big challenge. But you know, I reckon our team, like the team that we got in, oh, people might say, oh, well, Carlton have this player out, oh, well, Carlton have these players out. But honestly, we have the team to do it, and now our all these players coming in now, proving that they can they can get the job done. They can come in and they can and they can and they can do this role and then do the role that they're set to play. That proves that. What a great football club we are. And we're going to take it each week, week by week, and we're going to go out there and we're going to and we're going to dominate. And we absolutely dominate. We didn't give him any room, any room in that second half, Terry. And I'm going to be honest, Lewis Young, quiet game, doesn't matter. He had some really good moments, had a bit of, you know, he had a bit, made a bit of mistakes, you know, he maybe wasn't in the contest enough. But, you know, it's his first time coming back in. Him and Weeders, you know, just have to get used to each other. You know, um, but you know, everyone played well. And I'm not back at Terry. Come on, bring on Geelong next week. Come on, Terry. Woo! Good idea, Zach. Oh, no, wait, blue, hey, one more question. Yeah. Do you think March Bank will be available next week, or we keep Young in the side, or <clears throat> what do you prefer? I think if March Bank has had a couple of games back in the VFL that he would play, but mm. he's got a fractured back at the moment. So I don't think Ooh. we're going to see Mark Bank for a while. Yeah. I mean, well, I, I absolutely love Lewis Young, honestly. I Because I, I remember a, a couple of years ago when Voss just, just came in, we used to play both Wettering and Young. And I, and I really like Young, you know. He he does a really good job. You know what yeah. I mean? Absolutely. All right, Terry. All right. Um, I've got to All go right, now, right. but um, I'll see. I will um, speak to you next week um, after the Geelong game. All right, mate. I'll speak right. to you after the Geelong game. See ya. <laughs> hey, Terry. Bye. See you, mate. <laughs> Amazing. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna finish up because I want to. Uh, I want to get out. I want to get out of the house. Get amongst the. Get amongst the streets, mate. That was awesome. 
That is what it's all about. I'll never forget where we came from five years ago, six years ago. Uh, and I will never allow myself to take wins like this for granted because of how long we waited to watch this club figure it out, learn how to win uh, and show some heart and ticker and, and develop. And this is what we're watching. You know, winning, losing, we're playing better football overall. Uh, you know, we lose last week. We generate a lot of scoring opportunities, just not efficient. We seem to learn our lesson this week. We hung in there. We took, I th I'm trying to think who looked more sharp, the Giants today or Brisbane in that first half? Whatever. Two great sides that we've played in the competition and we've been able to withstand their best and most efficient and still figure it out figure out a way to to get the game on our terms and i just think we're watching we're watching a mature group they're fitter they're stronger for longer and it's awesome and we can't lose sight of the fact that we are improving steadily so not to get too ahead of ourselves lots of work to do so much more we can get better at but for tonight that was fantastic so thanks for tuning in uh make sure you get your blue abroad pins the link is in is pinned to the live chat on YouTube. I'll sit there on your scarf. Also, shout out to Corey Durden, my man, number 19, played a ripper game tonight. Uh, and we do sponsor Corey Durden here on the channel. So anyway, enjoy that. I'm sure we're going to watch the replay just for an update. The Eagles are doing the Dockers nicely. Uh, the Cats are up by seven against the Lions. It looks like Tom Stewart won't play next week. I haven't seen the, the collision, but it looks like he was subbed off with uh, a head knock. So that will definitely help us. Anyway, Stiniamas, go Blues.